All right, in this video, we're going to be converting equations between um, polar form and rectangular form. And remember, rectangular form is just referring to the form that we've grown up with, and that's using things in terms of x and y. So if you recall um, from when we were learning about polar coordinates and rectangular coordinates, we have four different sets of equations that we can use to help us do those conversions. So one is that x equals r cos theta. Another is that y equals r sine theta. Another is that r squared equals x squared plus y squared, and that sometimes we might end up using this as r equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. And then the last is that tan theta equals y over x, and so we might sometimes use this as theta equals tan inverse of y over x. All right, so the thing to keep in mind when you're converting the goal is to make these substitutions. and then simplify with those substitutions until you have a recognizable equation. So first we're going to talk about converting to rectangular because for us that's going to be a little bit easier um, to recognize when we're finished. And as we're doing that we'll be able to see what the different polar equations look like so that when we switch to converting to polar we'll have a little bit better idea of what a recognizable equation looks like in polar. So for example, if we have r equals 4 then we know that that means on the polar graph paper trace the radius of 4 all the way around and we know that's going to give us a circle with a radius of 4. So we're going to go ahead and start off by making a substitution. You can also start off by squaring each side, it's up to you. So I'm going to go ahead and show both ways of doing this problem. So first if you start off by making a substitution then for the r, you're going to substitute square root of x squared plus y squared equals 4. And then after that, you would square each side to turn it into a recognizable equation. And you would get x squared plus y squared equals 16, which is a recognizable equation because this is a circle centered at 0, 0 with a radius of 4. So you could stop there because that's recognizable. The other option for doing this conversion is to start off by squaring each side. So you get r squared equals 16. And then after that you can say, oh, for r squared I'm going to substitute x squared plus y squared and get 16. And either way you get the same answer and it's still the same number of steps. So it just kind of depends on what feels the most natural to you. All right, so this is a circle which means we've got a recognizable equation. All right, for the next example, we're going to do r equals 4 sine theta. And so here, I could make a substitution for r. That would be the square root of x squared plus y squared. But there isn't a substitution for me to make with 4 sine theta. It has to be 4 r sine theta. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this entire equation and multiply it by r. And that gives me r squared equals 4r sine theta. And the reason that I can multiply that r on each side is because if I have r squared, I have a substitution I can make. 
and if I have four R sine theta, I have a substitution I can make. And so it's appropriate to do that because it would be beneficial in the problem. So R squared is X squared plus Y squared equals 4Y. And here I'm looking at this and I'm thinking that kind of looks like what we had worked with last unit with conics, we have an x squared and a y squared, and that um, always became a circle. And so I know this is going to be a circle, and it's not kind, it's not cleaned up like this one. This one was a circle centered at zero zero with a radius of four. This doesn't look like that, and that's because this is a circle where they haven't completed the square yet. So this is where it's important to know when you get to the recognizable equation, what form are they expecting it to have? And here, if the instruction said to put the um, problem in general conic form, then you could just subtract the 4y over and make it equal 0. But if they want the standard form of everything, then we're going to have to go ahead and complete the square. So, And typically, when you're dealing with a circle, that's what I want you to do. So um, we're going to say x squared plus y squared minus 4y. I'm going to leave a space for my completing the square process and then it equals 0 now. So I've got negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. And whatever I do to the left side of the equation, I need to do to the right side of the equation. So that gives me x squared plus something squared equals something. And the stuff in here would be y minus 2. So x squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 0 plus 4, which is 4. So again, we have a recognizable equation. It's a circle centered at 0, 2 with a radius of 2. All right, now most polar equations are going to be written um, in the form r equals something. But every so often, you're going to get equations that are written as theta equals something. So here we're going to do theta equals pi fourths. And um, if you just think through it, if you're graphing theta equals pi fourths, then you're tracing that straight line that pi fourths is on. And so anytime you have a theta equals equation, that's a straight line. But it's specifically a straight line that goes through the origin. So we have other equations of straight lines that are going to be written as r equals equations, but they don't go through the origin. If an equation is a straight line that goes through the origin, it's going to be written this way. So I just have to remember that tan theta equals y divided by x. So I'm going to go ahead and write down that formula. This one, for some reason, it helps me to see it written out. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take that pi fourths and plug it in for theta. So I have tan of pi fourths equals y divided by x. And I know that tan of pi fourths is root 2 over 2 divided by root 2 over 2, which is 1. So 1 equals y over x. And then to make this look like an equation in the form y equals mx plus b, I'm just going to multiply each side by the x. So I have y equals 1x plus 0, or y equals x. So either way, that's a line. And this was a circle. I didn't write that. Okay. Now, they could, um, when they want you to classify these and make it a recognizable equation, you'll have to pay attention to the directions because the directions could say just like write what it is, or maybe they want some more information. So you could say this is a line, or you could say this is a line with a y-intercept of 0 and a slope of 1. So there's, and you could say this is a circle, or you could say this is a circle centered at 0, 2 with a radius of 2. So there's different levels um, of how specific you can be when you're saying how it's recognizable. Okay, we're going to do another example. I just want to show you guys like all sorts of different problems. Um, not that I'm showing you every single type, but I don't want you to be shocked. So. All right, so here's another one, r equals 5 cos theta. So I know that I can do something with the r, that's the square root of x squared plus y squared, but I can't do anything with a cos that's by itself. So if I think about, well, let me multiply by r on each side, then that would give me r squared on the left side, but on the right side that would give me 5r 
and the cos theta would still be a problem. So when you have a problem that's like this, and it could say cos theta on the bottom, or it could say like cos theta plus sine theta on the bottom, it could say multiple things, the best method here is to take this and multiply it over to the other side. So I'm going to say this is r cos theta equals 5. And the reason that's beneficial is because we actually know what r cos theta is. r cos theta is x, so x equals 5. So what we have here is we have a linear equation, but it's actually a vertical line. All right, so we'll do some more of those tomorrow in class if we need to. But now I want to go over how to convert to polar form. So what we noticed is that most of the equations, unless they are straight lines that go through the origin, most of the equations, um, when they're recognizable, are written as r equals something. So that's going to be our goal typically when we convert these equations, is to get it as an r equals something. So I've got x squared plus y squared equals 25. So here I know that x squared plus y squared is r squared r squared equals 25 and the method for finding the polar equation is typically going to be through factoring it doesn't necessarily have to equal zero and I think that I might have an example of that in my notes later um, yep I do but um, equaling zero is a good idea in most cases so here I'm gonna go ahead and make this equal zero like in normal factoring r squared minus 25 equals 0. And when I factor this, that's difference of squares. r plus 5, r minus 5 equals 0. And so we get two equations from this. We get r equals negative 5, r equals positive 5. So we know already that this is a circle with a radius of 5 and it's centered at 0, 0. And we know that if we were to take the equation r equals 5, then we would go on a polar grid and we would find where the radius of 5 is and we would draw that circle. Um, and what you can also do but feels a little bit weird is you can call that a radius of negative 5, 2. Because if you recall, a negative radius just kind of means you're going backwards on the line. And so it actually makes the same shape. So here, most people would probably not write this answer down. They would just say r equals 5. But if you ever see an equation that says like r equals negative 3 or something, just know it's the same thing as r equals 3. So these two are the same equation. And no, you do not have to write both of them. You could just write this one. Okay, for the next one, we're going to do 2x squared plus 2y squared minus x plus y equals 0. So this um, is a rectangular equation that's in the general conic form. I can tell that it's um, a circle, and that's because it has an x squared and a y squared, and they both have the same coefficient. So I'm going to go ahead and get this a little bit more set up. I, I have a substitution I can make for x and a substitution I can make for y. And I have a substitution I can make for x squared plus y squared, but not a 2x squared plus 2y squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out this 2 just from these two pieces. And the reason I'm going to do that is because it leaves me with x squared plus y squared, which I have something I can substitute in for that. So now I have 2r squared. And then here I've got minus r cos theta plus r sine theta. All right, so here's where the factoring is a little bit different um, with converting to polar forms versus the factoring that you have learned about with quadratics, is that when you're factoring to convert into polar form, you want every term that has an r in it on one side, and then any term that does not have an r with it should go on the other side. So here we have all r's, so that's good. Um, eventually, like I said, I'll show you an example where we're going to have something left over on the right side. Okay, But this only works if everything is in terms of r and theta when you do it. Okay, so I'm going to be able to isolate the r, and I'm going to do that by factoring out a GCF of r. So r parentheses 2r minus cos theta plus sine theta 
equals zero. And then just like with factoring, um, I can go ahead and take each term and set it equal to zero. For the ones that end up having something on the right side, you'll see that they end up working a little bit differently. So here I'm gonna say r equals zero. And then over here, I'm gonna say um, 2r minus cos theta plus sine theta equals zero. And this one is solved already. If you can picture this, r equals zero is a circle with a radius of zero. That's literally a dot at the pole. So that just means that when we were to graph, if we were to graph this equation over here, it happens to go through the pole. You're gonna get this answer most times and you typically just kind of ignore it because it's like, okay, cool, there's a dot at the pole. That doesn't really tell me a whole lot. So over here, I'm gonna go ahead and solve for this r, and I'm gonna do that by adding the cos theta over and subtracting the sine theta over. So I have two r equals positive cos theta minus sine theta. And then to get the r alone, I'm gonna go ahead and divide by two. So r equals cos theta minus sine theta, all divided by two. And the reason I know that that's a recognizable polar equation is because it looks pretty simple and it's just r equals. And so that's, that's how most of the equations looked when they were given to us. Okay, we're gonna look at another example. So this one says x minus two squared plus y squared equals four. So this, again, is a circle equation, but this one is not given to us in general conic form. It's given to us in the standard um, form for a circle. And so to be able to do this conversion, you could convert right away r cos theta and r sine theta, but I think it makes the problem kind of difficult and it makes it so you have to memorize a few different processes. And so what I like to do is I like to write this out and make it look like the last problem that we did. So I'm writing this twice because it's squared and then I'm gonna go ahead and foil it. So I have x squared minus 2x minus another 2x plus four. And I'll go ahead and I'll put my x squared and my y squared together since I know those make one substitution. And I'll go ahead and subtract this four over and make it equal zero. And when I subtract that four over, then the fours cancel. So at this point, I'm ready to make my substitutions. So x squared plus y squared is r squared. 4x is 4r cos theta. So just like last time, we're gonna factor this. So r times r minus four cos theta. So this r equals zero, and this r equals four cos theta. And r equals zero again is just a point at the pole. That doesn't really tell me much, but this is my polar equation right here. Just a couple more examples. Okay, so for this one, we're gonna look at y equals negative x. So this is an example of a straight line. It has a y-intercept of zero, so that means it goes through the origin. And since that is the case, that means that the goal that we're going towards is using tan theta equals y divided by x and we want the theta to be solved for. We want theta equals tan inverse of y over x. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna get that y over x piece. So I'm gonna divide by x and divide by x. So I have y over x equals negative one. And now that I have that y over x isolated, I can replace it with tan inverse. So I'm gonna say, not tan inverse, sorry, tan theta. So I'm replacing y over x with tan theta. Tan theta equals negative one. And now to get the theta alone, I can go ahead and tan inverse each side. So theta equals tan inverse of negative one could be three pi fourths. It could be seven pi fourths. 
it could be negative pi fourths. It could be 135 degrees. It could be 315 degrees, et cetera, et cetera. So all of these are different ways of writing the exact same straight line. Um, so since you have all sorts of coterminal angles and you have radians, and you have degrees, then these problems have lots and lots of answers. You don't have to write all of them, you just have to write one. All right? Okay, and then our last example, we're going to look at y equals 6x minus 3. So here we have a straight line, but it does not go through the origin. So if it does not go through the origin, you are not going to use the conversion with tan theta. You're just going to use your normal um, x's and y's. So what I like to do is I like to start off um, by getting the x and the y on one side. And we're going to, anything that's a plain number, we're just going to leave. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract over the 6x. So I have y minus 6x equals negative 3. And then I'm going to go ahead and make my substitutions. So I have r sine theta minus 6r cos theta equals negative 3. And the reason that I can go ahead and have this not equal 0 is that I don't have an r squared in this equation. I just have an r. So when I factor out that GCF of r, then I can divide everything else over and I just have the r isolated. So I'm using factoring as a method to help me, but it's not like a true factoring to solve situation because I'm not setting it equal to zero. So I'm gonna take the r out and that leaves me with sine theta minus six cos theta. So I'm just using factoring as my method for isolating the r. And now I can take all this stuff and divide it over. So r equals negative 3 divided by all that stuff. So that's what polar equations look like when they are straight lines.